Uh, when I started school in grade one, I was identified as having a mental block. This was the late 1950s, and there wasn't even a term learning disability or learning difficulty. One of the things that my teacher was accurate about, uh, I mean, she, she made many predictions. So one prediction was I wouldn't amount to much, um, and that my parents shouldn't have high expectations for me. So I, I think she wasn't accurate there. But she did say that all of my schooling would be a struggle, and it was. Um, I hated school. Uh, there was no joy in any of my learning because it was so difficult. Luria was a brilliant Russian neuropsychologist. He was looking at people with a traumatic head injury after World War II in Russia. And what he would do is if there's damage to this part of the brain, what can the person no longer do? Therefore, what is the job of that part of the brain? And then I was reading work coming out of Berkeley in the University of California, uh, looking at neuroplasticity in rats. The idea was, you know, lots of stimulation led to changes in the brains of the rats, better neurotransmission, and they were better at learning mazes. So I thought if rats have neuroplasticity, surely humans must, and everybody told me at that point, no, that's not true, there is no human neuroplasticity, the brain's hardwired, but I was desperate because I was now 26, saw no future for myself, so I put the two lines of research together and developed the first exercise. So the clocks exercise uh, came to be again in reading Luria's work. So he talked about if someone had the problem that I had, they can't understand relationships. And he said they can't tell time, and I was 26 and couldn't tell time. And it's not about telling time per se, but it's seeing the relationship between the hour hand and the minute hand. So I thought, you know, maybe that's a way to make my brain process relationships is to force it to tell time. So I would, you know, draw a clock face and draw another clock face and I had to have somebody help me because I was pretty um, pathetic at the activity. But over time I got really fast and really accurate and that was great, so now I could tell time, but I didn't feel change in my brain or my functioning. So I thought I have to make it harder, so I added a third hand, and that was great. And then I added a fourth hand. And so it was the idea of processing four relationships simultaneously. And it was after mastering that level that I knew there was human neuroplasticity. The activity that we saw Kate doing, the tracing activity, is working on the cognitive function that translates your thoughts into a motor plan in writing. This is a student that can tell you a story, but you put a pen in their hand and it doesn't go down on the page. So it's translating thought into the, the mechanical process of writing. And I think her mother talked about how now she can write her journal, she can write much more um, information. It also affects spelling, because one of the ways you spell is you learn a motor plan. Like you think of the word cat, but you don't have to think about how you form each letter, it just flows out the end of the pen. So it'll affect, um, it'll affect writing, it'll affect spelling, and it also affects reading because it works on the motor plan in eye tracking to track um, letters.